as your contracts start to get more complex, you're probably going to want to break up your code into multiple different contracts for better readability and reusability. You also might come across existing contracts written by third parties that you want to use inside of your applications. So we're going to need some sort of way for a contract to be able to inherit and use functionality from other existing contracts. Let's look at a simple example that you may see in the wild called the owned contract. Now, the owned contract is going to specify a variable called owner and on construction is going to set the owner to the account that created the contract. And then it's going to also present a modifier called only owner that you can quickly use as a shorthand to label any function in your contract as only callable by the creator of the contract. Okay, let's walk through a simple example of how this works. I'm going to make a simple contract called hello world, which has a string called message and then a function called set message, which takes a string as an argument and then sets the message to that message. But I only want this function to be callable by the owner of the contract. So I want to be able to use that only owner modifier as defined in the own contract. So here's what I will do. I'm going to add a keyword called is right after the contract declaration and then the name of the contract I want to inherit from called owned. So I'm going to set the hello world contract is owned. Now, essentially what's going to happen is when the Solidity compiler comes across this, it's going to take the functionality out of the owned contract and more or less just merge it together. So we're going to make one contract that basically just has all the declarations from the contract it's inheriting from. And then this contract will get deployed onto the blockchain that we can use. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm going to copy this code, then I'm going to start up my test RPC, and once that's started, I'm going to run node.decipher.js to get my REPL with all my little helper functions. And then I'm going to set var source equal to this string of contracts, and then I'm going to say var um, deployed equals decipher.create contract, and then pass in the source. Okay, and I should, if I check, I should be able to query deployed.owner.call, because that's a public variable, and I'll see that I do get an address, and that actually is the address of the first account. Now note that this owner variable was defined in the own function, so it must have actually worked where it merged these functions together, um, because that actually isn't defined in the Hello World contract. Now I should be able to also see deployed.message.call and I don't get anything. Now, if I do deployed.set message, and I'll just set this to hello world, and I will pass this from account one, who is the owner of the contract, I'll see that the message did work. Now, if I call the message, I do get hello world. But if I tried to call set message and change it to something else, hello something different, and I made this from instead of account one, but account two, we'll see that it's still hello world, it didn't work. So the only owner modifier must have actually functioned correctly, which means that this is inheriting functionality from this other contract. Now, we might not wanna write multiple contracts inside of the same file. We might wanna split it out into multiple files. In that case, I'm gonna make a new file called hello world.sol, and I'm gonna copy the hello world contract into it just like that. Now, if I wanna reference a contract that's not defined in the same file, we're going to need to import it. And this works very similar to the way it does in ES6 JavaScript, where you can just define a relative path, owned.soul. And then if you call the Solidity compiler on this file, it will actually know how to go get the code from the other file and merge it together. Now, this will work if you're using the um, operating system Solidity compiler that you need to install that runs on C++. I'm not using that. I'm using the JavaScript Solidity compiler right now. So for purposes of keeping things simple throughout the rest of these screencasts, at least until we get to configuring your own node and your own dev, dev environment, I'm just going to be writing things in one file just because it's easier. There's one more contract that I want to look at called the mortal contract. And the mortal contract is very similar to the owned contract, except it adds one function at the end called kill. Now what kill does is it calls out to the function self-destruct and then passes an Ethereum address into the function. Okay. So self-destruct is a native opcode to the Ethereum virtual machine, which essentially terminates the existence of a contract on the Ethereum blockchain. And this argument that it takes, which is an Ethereum address, is where it'll send the entire existing Ether balance of a contract when it is called. Now, this used to be called suicide. So if you're reading old documentation about Ethereum, you might see an opcode called suicide. It was changed to self-destruct somewhat recently for sensitivity reasons, but they refer to the same thing. Now, why would you want to be able to kill a contract? Well, 
maybe you're just testing something. You deploy something, you're testing it out, but you want it to be gone. No one can call it after you're done testing it. That might be a reason. You might want to be able to put like kind of an escape hatch in your contract. So if there's a bug or if you just want to do a normal upgrade to your application, you can then deploy a new contract, switch over some address to that contract, and then kill the old contract. So let's just take a quick look at how the mortal contract would work. Okay, so I'm gonna copy the code here and I'm going to paste it into the hello world contract. And then instead of owned, I'm going to say that this contract is mortal and I'm gonna copy this, go here and define var source equal to this contract. And then I'm gonna do var deployed equals decipher.create contract and then pass in the source. Now, as part of the decipher.js helper file that I've included with this specific screencast, I'm sending three ether by default to each contract when I create it. So I should be able to look decipher.ether balance deployed and see that this actually has three ether. And let's just look at the ether balance balance of account one, which is 93.98. Okay, so I'm gonna do decipher.set message. Hello again and this is going to be from account one and this shouldn't be decipher sorry this should be the deployed and i should be able to do deployed dot message dot call and see that i have hello again okay now i'm going to do deployed dot kill and i'm going to send this from account one who's the owner of the contract now if i look now at the decipher dot ether balance of account one I'll see that it's three ether higher. So when I killed this contract, it actually did self-destruct and send its ether balance to that account. If I tried to check the ether balance of deployed, I'll see that it's zero. And if I actually try now to get even the message from that deployed contract, I get an error because that contract is gone. It, it's terminated, its existence is you know off of the blockchain and now it's self-destructed and no one can call into it.